The notion of inner product can be generalized to two vectors in Cn. We denote the inner product by these braces C and W, a comma and the W, and the definition is C1 bar W1 plus Cn conjugate times Wn. Here we are assuming that C is the vector C1, Cn, W is the vector W1, Wn, and remember that the conjugate of A plus Bi, if A and B are real numbers, the conjugate is just A minus Bi. Some interesting properties about the conjugate is that if you multiply a number with its conjugate then we get a square minus a b i plus a b i minus b square i square and this is just a square plus b square then when you multiply a complex number with its conjugate uh, you just get the length square of that vector, of that complex number, and it's a real non-zero negative number. Uh, let's do an example. If we have two, three plus i, i inner product with one, two minus i, two plus i then this inner product is equal to the conjugate of 2, which is just 2, times 1, plus the conjugate of 3 plus i, which is 3 minus i, times 2 minus i, plus the conjugate of i, times 2 plus i. Remember that the conjugate of i is just negative i. Then this is just 2, plus 6 minus 3i minus 2i plus i square minus 2i minus i square and this is 8 i square is negative 1 then it will be 7 and here is plus 1 this to cancel out is 8 and here we have negative 5 negative 7i some properties that are easy to prove is that if I multiply by a complex number alpha, a vector c, and we do the dot product with w, then we get uh, the conjugate of alpha c1 conjugate times w1 plus the conjugate of alpha cn times wn and here we are assuming that c and w are given by this formula and then uh, the conjugate of a product is the product the product of the conjugates then i can find an alpha conjugate and i get c1 conjugate w1 plus cn conjugate wn and this is just alpha conjugate the that product of C with W. Uh, in the same way, if we do the C, the vector C, and then we multiply by the complex number alpha, the vector W, then this inner product is just going to be alpha times C and W. And if we wonder if the inner product commutes, the answer is not in general they do not commute if we do w and c then we get w1 conjugate c1 plus wn conjugate cn but something that is easy to check is that uh, c w conjugate give us w c and maybe the last property that is easy to check 
is that uh, if we do the, the product of c with c, we will call this the norm of c squared. And this is just c1 conjugate times c1 plus cn conjugate times cn. Remember that each one of these numbers is the sum of the square of two real numbers. For that reason, the whole thing is zero only if z is the zero vector and other than that this number is a real positive number we are going to still be calling two vectors perpendicular if the that inner product is equal to zero and an interesting property that we have for the inner product is the following let me write it as a theorem. Theorem. Let's suppose that we have some vectors, B, K, and they are contained in C, N. Let's suppose that all of these are non-zero. This is, they are different from zero. And let's suppose that if I is different from j. If you pick two vectors, then the inner product of these two vectors is equal to zero. That means that every pair of vectors are perpendicular to each other. Then the theorem says that if this happens, then the vectors are linearly independent. And to do the proof, we consider a linear combination of these vectors equal to the zero vector. And then we multiply on the left by the vector b1. And let's see what we get. We do b1, that product with this linear combination. This is equal to B1, that product with the vector 0, but this is clearly 0. And, but then when we do this, we get, using this property, this is just alpha 1, B1, that product with B1, plus alpha 2, B1, that product with B2, plus alpha K, B one that product with bk and this is equal to zero but the properties that we are asking for these vectors is that they are perpendicular to each other then this inner product is zero this inner product is zero and then we are only left with alpha one the norm of b1 square which is just this that product and this is equal to zero and therefore we have that alpha one must be zero if we do the same thing, but if we multiply by by the vector v2, we do the inner product with v2, then we will get that alpha 2 equals 0, and so on. Therefore, if you have a linear combination equal to 0, then that only happens when all the alpha sub i are equal to 0. That means that these vectors are linearly independent. Another property that is interesting is that if we consider uh, a set S like that one, B1, BK, containing CN, and let's suppose that, again, they are non-zero vectors, and they are mutually perpendicular to each other. Right? This is equal to zero if i is different from j. Then this theorem says that if we have a vector in the span of S, then we know that we can find some weights such that this vector can be written as a linear combination of this. But then what the theorem says is that those weights are relatively easy to find. Then the theorem says w is equal to this sum 
with uh, alpha i equal to the dot product of b sub i with w over the normal square of b sub i. And the proof is essentially the same that we did here. What we do is we multiply on the left by b sub i, and then we get that b sub i that product with w, and then when we do this that product, we get k terms, but most of them are going to be zero, and the only one that is going to survive is the term b sub i times alpha i times b sub i, but because of the properties, this alpha i comes out, and we get b sub i that product with b sub i, and solving for alpha i, we get this part. Then um, we have that theorem. Let's do. Let's see an example. Example. Um, let's suppose that b one is one and two minus i. And v2 is 2 plus i, 2 plus i, negative 1. Notice that in this case, the dot product of b1 and b2 is just 1 times 2 plus i, plus the conjugate of 2 minus i, which is 2 plus i, that product with negative 1. And this is just 2 plus i minus 2 plus i, which is 0. Uh, here, b1, b1 is just uh, 1 times 1 plus 2 plus i times 2 minus i. And this is 1 plus 4 plus 1, which is 6. And b2, b2, same thing. We can check that this is also 6. Notice that these two vectors, they form a basis for C2. Why? C2 is a two-dimensional space. This is two-dimensional. When we are working in the complex numbers, we have that these two vectors, they form a basis. And then the dimension of this C2 is 2. And we have these two vectors. They are non-zero vectors, and they are perpendicular to each other. Because of this theorem, they are linearly independent. And we already know that a pair of vectors that are linearly independent, they form a basis for a two-dimensional space. Then, if we, we can pick any vector w in, in R2, and we should be able to find uh, the linear combination of these two vectors that produces that w. Let me do an example. By the way, before I forget, uh, a collection of vectors that satisfies this condition, let me write it as definition, definition, S satisfying this condition is called and orthogonal set. Then we have an orthogonal set when we have a collection of vectors that are non-zero and they are perpendicular to each other. Let's pick uh, our vector w to be the vector uh, 3 plus i, 2 minus i. Then uh, if we want to write this w as a linear combination of this vector 1, 2 minus i plus alpha 2 times 2 plus i negative 1, one way to go is to create a linear system and then solve the linear system and then we can find alpha 1 and alpha 2. But we can use the previous theorem that says that alpha 1 is just 
B1, that product with W, over B1, B1, and alpha 2 is just B2, that product with W, over B2, B2. Uh, let's see, we already know that B1, B1 is 6, B2, B2 is 6, and in this case, if I do a B1, 1, 2 minus I, that product with 3 plus I, 2 minus I, this, that product is equal to 1 times 3 plus I, plus 2, the conjugate of 2 minus I, which is 2 plus I, times 2 minus I. And then this is just uh, 3 plus I. And this is a number times its conjugate. It will be plus 5. And then this is 8 plus I. On the other hand, if I do B2, that product with W, then this would be equal to uh, B2 is the conjugate of 2 plus i is 2 minus i times 3 plus i plus the conjugate of negative 1 which is just negative 1 times 2 minus i and this is 6 plus 2i minus 3i minus i squared minus 2 plus i. And what is this? This is 6 plus 1 is 7 minus 2 is 5. And here we have 2i minus 3i is negative i plus i. It would be 0. Then this that product is just 5. That means that I can write this vector w as this linear combination uh, a plus i over 6 times b1 plus phi over 6 times b2. Let's check that this is true. Uh, let's factor a 1, 6. And then we get a plus i. And here when I multiply this by this, I get 16 minus 8i plus 2i minus i squared plus... 5, 6, or let's just say 1, 6, and let's multiply the 5. It would be 10 plus 5i minus 5. And then this is just 1, 6 times 8 plus 10 is 18. And here we have i plus 5i is plus 6i. And here uh, this is 16 negative i squared is 1, 16 plus 1 is 17, minus 5 is 12, and then negative 8i plus 2i is negative 6i, minus 6i. We can factor at 1, 6, then we get 3 plus i, and here we have 2 minus i, which is the vector w. Then Having an orthogonal set of linear independent vectors is very useful because it allows us to write any vector in its span easily in terms of the of those vectors. We just need to do some multiplications. We don't have to do a system of equations.